The Great Migration is in full swing. Multiple species of all shapes and sizes are marching across the northern continent, following the rains and the essential growth it provides. This includes many species of ceratopsins, from Chasmosaurus to Pentaceratops. Though all of the species eat similar food, they often take different paths in the migration or travel to different areas. When they do come together, there is usually plenty of resources and space for all of them to coexist peacefully, without the need for confrontation. However, this year the rains have been lacking and plant life has been reduced, slowed or even ceased altogether. This has forced more and more large herbivores to congregate together. And with food getting scarcer, the area is ripe for hostility. Styracosaurus, a large ceratopsian dinosaur, most identifiable by its large nose horn and the multiple other horns sprouting from the crests and cheeks. They live in small herds, with a single male watching over a number of females and their young. This herd has a seasoned bull and three sows, along with four juveniles of various ages. They have moved to the remnants of a small river. Although the water is gone, some of the plants are still edible. Their sharp beaks and batteries of teeth make short work of the ferns and cycads, so they are not left alone to eat it for very long. A herd of chasmosaurus are steadily making their way towards the group. The chasmosaurs travel in a much larger herd, but are more docile than the styracosaurus, and normally would avoid their spikier relatives. However, in this drought, they have to take every opportunity they can to feed. The male styracosaurus watches the newcomers approach. At first, the two groups remain separate, but with so little food available. Eventually, the lines between the herds begin to blur. With hunger already making the situation tense, and the stubborn styracosaurus not used to sharing, it is only a matter of time before one false move sparks a confrontation. One of the female styracosaurus is feeding on some cycads, when a chasmosaurus walks up to the same plant and begins to feed. Eating close to one another is normal for chasmosaurus, but not for styracosaurus, who prefer to fan out from one another. In response, the styracosaurus exhales sharply, an indication for the intruder to move away. Not understanding the other species' cue, the chasmosaurus ignores her. The female then uses her nose horn and smacks the intruder across the side of the jaws. For a styracosaurus, this is about as kind of a gesture as it gets. But for a chasmosaurus, it is taken as an act of aggression. The chasmosaurus lets out a loud yell that triggers the whole herd. All at once, all of them also begin to call, and then form together into a wall of shielded heads facing the Styracosaurus, with the young members of the herd behind them. The Styracosaurus respond by bellowing loudly and stomping on the ground with their feet, making as much noise as possible, while swinging their heads back and forth from side to side. With their spikes and horns, the Styracosaurus are better built for offense, and act more aggressively. But the Chasmosaurus have larger shields, and with their tight formation are much better suited for defense. They also have more numbers, and face the intimidating display stoically. The Styracosaurus male isn't about to give up the area that he found first, and lowers his head and aims for the center of the Chasmosaurus line, ready to charge. Suddenly, a shrill cry of pain is heard from behind the Chasmosaurus line, all eyes turn to see that one of the youngsters behind the adults has been lifted into the air in the jaws of a carnivorous Desplatosaurus. The heavily built predator holds the screaming juvenile securely in its vice-like jaws, and before the adults of the herd could react, turns and walks away, its catch still crying out for help. The adult Chasmosaurus change their defensive pattern and make a wall around the young, while the Styracosaurus continued to stomp the ground. Then another cry erupted, this time from the rear of the Styracosaurus. A subadult has been ambushed by three Gorgosaurus. They're not as large as the Desplatosaurus. They are easily capable of dragging their prey away from the herd. The Styracosaurus respond not with defense, but attack. The adults rush the predators. The first one caught one of the Gorgosaurus unaware and violently plunges her horn straight through the predator's neck. 
The predator tried to roar but wasn't able to. The horn had cut clean through nearly every vital component in his neck except the spine. The herbivore pulled her horn out of the gorgosaur, and in a panic, the wounded hunter threw himself on top of the herbivore, covering her body and bringing both of them to the ground. The male Styracosaurus smashed into the side of the dying predator, sending it crashing to the ground. Still writhing in pain, the Gorgosaurus was helpless as the two herbivores began to crush him underneath their feet. In the madness, the remaining predators had killed the subadult Styracosaurus, but had abandoned the kill upon seeing their packmate's death. They would return once his killers had left the area. The male Styracosaurus scans the area. The two Gorgosaurus were fleeing. The herd of Chasmosaurus were beginning to move away from the bloodshed and the massive Despotosaurus stood at a distance, ripping apart his kill piece by piece. The scent of death was thick in the air, but despite this, the herd resumed feeding, for there was nothing else to do. Feed, and then move on. No amount of drought, competition, or predators could change that. In a hard world, they were some of the hardest creatures in it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we will be breaking down a dinosaur so spiky, it's literally called the Spiked Lizard. Styracosaurus. Styracosaurus was discovered in 1913 in the Dinosaur Park Formation, Canada, and named in 1935. It was a large ceratopsian that lived in the Cretaceous period 75 million years ago. Measuring around 5.5 metres long, 2 metres high at the shoulder, and weighing around 2.7 tonnes. Its nose horn got between 55 and 57 centimetres in length, and is debated over whether it was straight, curved back like a rhino's, or jutted forward at the tip. On the crest it had six or more horns on top of the shield, and was lined with multiple smaller nodes. It also had two cheek horns under the eyes. Its jaws were very powerful, as it had massive jaw muscles connected to its skull. This, along with a large, sharp beak, meant it was well suited for tackling tough plants. It used this beak to slice off vegetation, and then the batteries of teeth in the back of its mouth to grind down the vegetation. These teeth would slowly be replaced by new ones as the animal aged. Styracosaurus remains are often found together, so her behaviour was likely. They could have travelled in herds of dozens or even hundreds. So what were the spikes used for? Well, the most obvious answer is for intimidation and defence against predators. After all, it would have been nearly impossible for a predator to get in under that shield to the neck. Second is display. The crest had holes in it and was likely covered in skin and may have been able to flush blood into the crest to create a display pattern to intimidate or attract. However, they probably didn't lock horns like you imagine a triceratops doing. Instead, they may have tried to get their nose horns under a rival's leg and push them away or topple them over, which would have been safer than trying to pierce each other with their horns. It shared its environment with dinosaurs such as Centrosaurus, Chasmosaurus, Lambarosaurus, Corypheosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Gorgosaurus, Desplatosaurus, Eulophocephalus, and Ornithomimus. Styracosaurus was a very intimidating looking dinosaur, and was likely a picky eater, going after tough flora that other ceratopsins, and indeed other herbivores, couldn't tackle. They lived at a time when there was massive amounts of food which was able to support such a wide range of herbivores, and have had many types of niches filled. But did its elaborate headgear mean it was more aggressive than others of its kind? This is something we probably will never know, but it's fun to speculate and create narratives around. So what do you think of Styracosaurus? Do you prefer to have lots of spines on the crests, or three horns on the head? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to cover in a future episode. Until then, stay sharp.